First Sergeant Kev here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. Uh, before uh, we get started, uh, I hope you took a chance to watch our video on what we keep in our uh, rifle cleaning kits for the new model 1859 Birdie and Sharps rifle. And also before we get started, it's really important that you make sure you read, understand, follow all safety instructions regarding the manufacturer uh, of your firearm. Uh, mine came with one new uh, from Pedersoli. If you have an older Sharps model or you bought yours new, you can often uh, search it online and find a PDF version, or you can even uh, spend some time going through uh, black powder shooter forums, and they usually have them posted. Another nice thing, too, is if you're new to reenacting or you are a proud new owner of a Sharps rifle, it's going to be really help helpful to know and see the parts diagram in case you misplace some of the... Uh, the order in which you took the rifle apart. The Sharps rifle isn't like a 1861 Springfield or an Enfield where there's only a few parts and they're really quick and easy to clean. The Sharps rifle has many parts and it's very critical that you put them in order. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to follow your manufacturer's instructions or consult the help of a licensed gunsmith. <clears throat> now, as whenever you handle any firearm, make sure your rifle is fully unloaded. I have my block already removed, but for demonstration purposes, you install the, I'll install the block again real quick. It's a little gummy because it's had a few rounds put through it. You start by push, de depressing, depressing this button on the right hand side of the block enough to swing your pin loose, and if it's been shot a lot, it'll take a little bit of wiggling for it to come out um, but if it's brand new or you know free, uh, recently cleaned it's gonna come out a lot easier then you remove your block and you're ready to get started on your first part of your journey um, <clears throat> this is a fairly new my petter soul is only about three years old if you, yours is older or a different generation or an IAB or an Army Sport, yours will be slightly different. On mine, this is a multi-piece block. This part comes off by itself. And then I have three rubber washers I carefully remove. Uh, set those on a nice clean towel. Yeah, the other thing too on my Pedersoli, and a lot of them don't have this feature, this uh, flash hole, excuse me if I don't have all the proper terms, and I have my uh, removing tool with me, three holes, two pins, the center hole is where the flash comes out. <clears throat> Make sure it's clean so the tool fits. I grab my screwdriver, I have my Wheeler uh, multi-piece gunsmithing kit. Make sure you have the proper bit for removing the cleanout screw. And uh, always, always, always remove the cleanout screw when you clean your rifle. This is the lifeblood of the rifle. A lot of people forget about this. And what happens is all the black powder residue practically rust welds this screw into place preventing you from properly cleaning your rifle and if this flash hole system gets clogged it's going to misfire a lot and it may even get to the point where the blocks no longer any good so always take out your clean out screw scrub it season it and you will have a long happy life firing your sharps rifle then you go back to your tool the holes have been cleaned out of any black powder residue and you remove it I said I think I put about oh, 60 or 70 rounds in our two battles yesterday. And this is stainless steel. On some of the older generations, um, this will look different on your block. And to know if it actually comes off or not, you get your owner's manual for that manufacturing generation of rifle. But sometimes you can actually see a seam. You can see here there's a little pry spot. Um, 
if it gets stuck on there. Then you use your uh, cone wrench and place it on top of the cone, remove the cone. Now for today's video we are going to fully break this thing down. So that way you know where everything goes. When we do a field clean, we've been uh, experimenting with the fastest way to do a field clean because the sharps can take a while. Um, we, in the field at a reenactment, the only thing we boil is the block itself. Uh, it's the lifeblood of the rifle, and if it's not seasoned, it's going to seize. And if it seizes, you're not going to have a good day reenacting, and you're just going to have to take a hit for Johnny Reb all the sooner. <clears throat> Now, in our previous video, we had the Fry Spider, which is a great cage to hold your items as they go into the bucket of boiling hot water. Uh, just below uh, the table here, I have a one gallon bucket, a metal bucket, uh, full of boiling water. I heat it up on the stove. At a reenactment, we uh, heat it uh, over a fire. And at home, I add a little bit of uh, uh, dish soap to help break down the black powder. In goes the block, fully disassembled, the cone, all the parts, everything I want seasoned. This is stainless steel, you could hit this up with a regular uh, gun cleaner, but figure, you know what, it's all going in together, it won't harm it. So this goes into the bucket, and since it's in the spider, you don't have to reach in the boiling water with your bare hands. I'm going to go and get that soaking. <coughs> oh, almost forgot the pan. Put the pan. The other thing too is you're disassembling your rifle, pay close attention. If, if parts are looking worn or unsafe, take the time and uh, replace your parts. Uh, I always keep, uh, with one of the things that go uh, the most often are the lever springs, which is right under here. You know, it provides the uh, snap for the block. Uh, I keep some extra ones on hand. Uh, a great place to get your parts, and they've been uh, a great friend of Company D, is VTI Gun Parts. They uh, have a great selection of all makes and models of sharps rifles and other black powder firearms. So, first part to disassemble the rest of the rifle is to remove your barrel bands. Now, I try to save myself some time by not removing the sling swivels. So I just loosen up my sling. Uh, if you'd like to uh, find a sling for your Sharps rifle, I believe we have the website uh, linked on our home page. So we have the second barrel band off. Now we're going for number three. Now we have the four stock screw. Still making sure we have the right size screw. Driver bit. Let me remove this. Now this is this is surprisingly important. This isn't like a modern fire. Black powder residue gets everywhere. And uh, just last year we uh, restored a firearm for fighting duty. And this whole area right under here was packed full of spent black powder and was just corroded uh, beyond imagine. But with proper care and disassembling your rifle, especially after an event and it's going to go into the storage box or the gun safe, take the time, take it apart, clean it properly, and you won't have any problems. Now we're going to remove the lever spring. And a little top tip too, if you're new to doing this, take all your parts off in order and lay them out in an order and clean them in an order. Uh, we've done this so many times, we, you could pretty much give us a bag of sharps parts and we can assemble it without any assistance. Um, the next thing that I like to do uh, for a full clean, you have the release pin for your lever and it's a little spring and we'll have to change our bits to something a little bit smaller and it's held in place, it's a pin and a spring, left hand side of the receiver, remove the cane screw and with one of your picks, push it through. You see we have our pin and our spring. And they'll get a nice good clean. The other reason you want to take this all apart 
is like the block, this is going into the boiling soapy water. And if I left the wood on or if I left these other pieces in there, uh, wet black powder residue can build up in there and stay there over time. So like I said, these are expensive and desirable rifles and they really attract the public and you want to make sure that your rifle is safe, clean, and fully functional. Taking out the screws for the log plate. Now we have this uh, all removed. This usually doesn't get too dirty. Normally you can see here I have black powder residue built up right there. A little phosphor, br br phosphor bronze brush will get that real good. And of course, uh, where the hammer hits the cone, we'll need to get a good scrub. Uh, this is uh, the inside of the firing mechanism, the, the trigger mechanism for the Sharps rifle. And like I said, the lever spring, this little guy, uh, is also kind of consumable because in reenacting, we use these rifles far more than if you were just using it as a recreational uh, target shooter. In some states, it might even be legal for you to hunt with these. But when you're reenacting, you're loading these things a lot more than uh, usual. So these will sometimes snap here from strain. The other thing that will get tired right uh, on a Sharps rifle is the mainspring. And you can uh, purchase these through BTI Gun Parts. Sometimes Dixie Gunworks has them uh, for Petersolis. And to do that, you can struggle with it or you can actually buy a mainspring tool. Uh, this is uh, from Petersoli. They had tools very much like this actually during the Civil War and they're super handy you don't use them often but when you need them it's worth every penny so we'll set that aside and we're getting down there so now we just have the trigger assembly and we have some more screws always making sure we have the right size bit remove our screws back one back one's a little bit bigger Get to change Um, sometimes if you get a used rifle and the clean out screw has never been replaced before, it'll be seized and there's something awful. I've managed to break, break them free because of uh, all my years of experience working on sorts of things like these. I found that a lubricant, an anti-seize uh, penetrating lubricant known as Aerocroil, is uh, has been very effective in my shop for breaking those bolts loose but it does take some time to soak that clean out screw and usually like a machinist device making sure you have the proper bits and experience if yours is seized and you're not that experienced or you just don't feel like taking any chances always always err on the side of caution when it comes to firearms even if you're reenacting. If you need some assistance, uh, the cost to take it to a licensed and practicing gunsmith will be well worth it. So just like that, the all the wood, all the other trim is removed from the rifle. If you want, you can even remove your front sight. Uh, we get quite a few comments about people who want to uh, take these and target shoot or compete with them. And one thing that we've learned through experience is since these are, well, yeah, all these are reproductions. And I think all but the Shiloh Sharps rifles, so you really get what you pay for with those. Uh, these reproductions aren't already designed for target shooting. So quite a few black powder shooters, and also through my own personal experience and the experience of other people in our company, uh, they've had to go to the range with a bunch of rounds already made and you kind of just file down your front sight until you start getting it dialed in to your preferred uh, grouping and distance that you want. Uh, but this one I mostly just use for reenacting. So now it's filthy, it's taken apart, it's ready for the hot water. So I'm going to, uh, because of the length of my cleaning rods, I'm going to dump this into the hot water receiver first. 
and let it sit there for a moment. Rest it on my table. The other important thing to have in your cleaning kit, leather gloves. If you can touch your barrel while you're cleaning it, it is not hot enough. And it makes a world, a world of difference. Uh, a lot of, a lot of vets say that you know, even in the military when they were serving, still using hot water to clean their rifles. And why do you use boiling water? Well, boiling water evaporates. Cold water will sit. So a little top tip, if you're cleaning your rifle in this direction, uh, wrap your hand over the muzzle so that way when you pull the brush out, you don't spray a whole bunch of black powder into your face. Uh, don't do this in your house. Uh, smell of black powder if you haven't used it before. Smells like some pretty old eggs. And whoever you're living with, even if it's your dog, will appreciate it if you clean this outside like I am in, in my shop. So, uh, since we're not firing uh, any lead down this, these things don't require a whole lot of scrubbing. But you want to get any sort of caked on black powder in there off. So that's still sitting down there. Remove my 54 caliber cleaning brush. And while that's still sitting, I'm going to go to my laid out pile of patches and set myself up in advance for some bore butter so that way I can get this stuff onto the rifle while it's still nice and hot. Uh, if you take all the time to boil your water and scrub your rifle with it, you need to make sure that you get your seasoning on there while it's still hot. If you wait till it gets cold, it defeats the purpose. It did give it a good clean, but it could still be better. So we use a, a swab or a barrel mop, and this just kind of helps us bring that boiling water up into the barrel so we can season the outside and we can season all the way up to the muzzle and this just sort of helps sweep out all the large contaminants that we had in the barrel after brushing it and this also really helps this process right here really helps free up the gas leave in the muzzle, or excuse me, in the breech. Now this is just our way of cleaning it. This, this works successfully for us. You ask 100 people how they clean their rifles, you will receive 100 different responses. And I'm sure about half of them will tell you that the other guy is doing it completely wrong. So this is just sort of advice, a good in intro level for beginners. If you are a seasoned black powder shooter you may have your own technique but with these sharps rifles it took us quite a while to kind of figure out what was the what was the sort of perfect process we were looking for now with the receiver all nice and hot we have our phosphor brush, phosphor bronze brush we're going to scrub out all this area real good nice boiling water I can feel the heat from the metal in my glove. Right up here, it's really important to scrub. You get a lot of uh, leftover black powder from where the primers were firing. But the rest of the rifle itself, aside from this block area and the outside, doesn't get too dirty. So you can pretty much just use a, a nylon brush to get underneath it. Real quickly, you have a rifle ready for your next step. So this is still really hot. I'm careful not to touch it with my bare hand. Grab my more butter patch, stick it over the top. Come with my cleaning jag ready to go. On my other cleaning rod. You don't have to use two cleaning rods. It's just the way in which I found my clean bore products in order. 
I was able to find uh, some of the black powder stuff on the small rod and some of the uh, larger brushes fit on the shotgun rod. And then you hit the outside. This gives it a nice good clean. Remove all that nasty residue. So that's just one patch on the outside. We don't have, I don't scrub the outside with hot water because all my cleaning agents do such a good job. But it's still really hot. It's melting the bore butter instantly, which means it's getting into the pores of the metal, just like you season a cast iron pan. And all that seasoning as you heat it and the fat goes into it provides a nice resilient non-stick surface. And as usual, I'm always a little shy. Be surprised at how much bore butter you go through. Bore butter has a purpose. Uh, some people don't like it, but I've found in general that the people who don't like it are the ones who use too much of it. Because once it dries, it turns back into a wax. And that wax, if you use too much of it in all the wrong places, will clog everything up. So you just want to season it. And when we're all done, we're going to wipe this down. So you want to dry it at the touch. You don't want all your firearms to be too oily. If it's too oily, uh, your black powder won't fire until the like, barrel gets heated up. And that can be frustrating, sometimes unsafe. So right there, we have it seasoned. And now we are ready to start cleaning the block.